Is that you? Saw your car run out of gas, Mr. Hart. I couldn't find more. Honest. Mitch, come on. What the hell's the matter with you? You could always get whatever we wanted. Not anymore. Oh, I can get you anything, but I can't get you gas. The only gas you got is in that station wagon of yours back there. And you better do something about that, too. All cars supposed to be checked in the depot a week ago. Oh, everything's going crazy. They even canceled the World Series. And I'm sorry about your family, Mr. Hart. I was going to send some flowers, but you can't even get those anymore. Oh, well, I'll, I'll be going now. Gonna be crazy to hang around here. Not getting any better. Ah, oh, no, sir. Too bad you couldn't erase that new car of yours, though.
always the hardest part. My wife and my son were among the first to be stricken by the disease. It all happened so suddenly. For a month or so, I had some kind of delayed reaction. I'd go back home and somehow just expect them to be there. I kept hearing sounds that weren't there anymore. Those of us who survived learned to cope with changes. And I lost a chance to do what I knew best, race cars. But like so many other things in our lives, it suddenly became expendable when the oil was shut off. I helped in the emergency field hospitals as much as I could. There were so many people that needed help. At first they came in by the hundreds, and then by the thousands. Military personnel were working around the clock trying to control the chaos in ways that no one really wanted. Oh, this car should have been turned in. Come on, move it! Death was everywhere, and no one was sure how it started. Some said it was a kind of Legionnaire's disease, but others had more conspiratorial theories. Germ warfare, terrorists. The rumors were endless and terrifying. Easy. Sorry. I beg you, start with my little girl. She'll be all alone. All right, you let her through. We lost track of the days, and after a while, we just learned to live with the panic and fear. It became part of our lives, until it finally subsided. time ago, over 20 years. you've gotten used to. No cars, going to work at a job you don't like, and living by the rules. The endless rules that they've made for us over these last two decades. So you learn to hide a part of yourself away from the others and just carry on, day by day by day. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the spokesman for the Mass Transit Authority, a man who used to be one of the most famous racing car drivers in the world, Mr. Frank Hart. Thank you. You know, I keep on being asked what a race car driver is. Well, back in the days when we had oil, it was possible to go from A to Z in the time it now takes to go from A to B. Except for all the hours we spent lining up for gasoline, of course. <laughs> this is the subject going to work. 
We got this this morning outside his office at the Transit Commission. He was three and one-half minutes late. His name is Franklin Hart. Do we have any other information on this man? I think I have something here that just came in. We got this last night. He was recorded going into a confiscation yard. Okay, stop it here. This was the third time he's been recorded in a place like this in the past month. He was there for about 27 minutes. Now, what is he carrying? I think it's something from an old car. It says here that he had some trouble adjusting to the new system. What was that report from the historical section? He has a couple of minor offenses for breaking rules. He used to race cars back when they were legal. He was responsible for a fatal car crash in the 1980s. They say he lost his nerve and wasn't able to drive at high speeds anymore. This footage is from that race. He lost his family in the epidemic. He was a... And that's enough, Mr. Morley. Have him brought in. Let me know tomorrow. Friday's the latest what's happening. Somebody's plugged into our lines that all these geniuses around here said were foolproof. Oh, yes, you must be Mr. Hart. Oh, have a seat. Oh, and Stuart, make sure that lawyer in the third section gets transferred. I'm sick of incompetence in that area. Now oh, then, Mr. Hart. I recognize you from your television appearances. We've installed video cameras over at the confiscation yards. In the old days, we called them junkyards. These aren't the old days, Mr. Hart. According to your files, you might be having trouble adjusting. Yeah, your files are right. The old days were better. Why? Not so many bureaucrats with questions. I don't miss the old days. Well, just how old were you when the oil ran out? Or was supposed to have run out? I'll ask the questions, Mr. Hart. Sure. Tell me, what were you doing over at the confiscation yards? Trying to build a new form of car, huh? Yeah. The Arabs are getting tired of their 30-year-old Cadillacs. You realize that with all the minor offenses against you, you are now automatically scheduled for a hearing. You could be sent to a rehabilitation center. Jail. A rehabilitation center. It's next Friday. For breaking rules. Laws. Lady, you got too goddamn many laws. <laughs> into the system, but somebody's doing it. Mr. Morley, I want it stopped. Yes, ma'am. in the race in which Franklin Hart of the United States defended his lead in overall points. But after two laps, Hart lost control on the corner, and just behind him, Hans Koenig of West Germany and Stefan Albers of South Africa were sent crashing into one another, and Koenig never stood a chance. 
trapped in his car, he was out of reach of desperate rescuers. Franklin Hart did not complete the race and went into seclusion. Hart, this is Hart City TV. Can you tell us how your husband is? He's alive. I don't know. I told him he's all right. Is there any other thing? Can you all tell? Could you please? I want to see my husband. California calling America. Our signal will probably be jammed in less than a minute by bureaucrats who now control this country. We have returned to the land, to the deserts, to the mountains, and to our cities. But we are also returning to machines. And Subways and trains into the hearts of mankind. Come on, Judd, not another bar. This place is different. That's what you said about the last place and the one before that. Frank, this is supposed to be fun. It's always a pleasure to see so many young, smiling faces, also some faces that aren't so young. And in a moment, I'm going to introduce you to a man who is the spokesman for the Mass Transit Utility, a man who in his time was one of the most famous race car drivers that there ever was. But I guess you kids from the 32nd District Boarding School wouldn't even remember what a racing car was. It was before your time. So, Frank, come on out here and talk to these people. Good morning. My name is Franklin Hart, and I've been asked to explain to you some of the advances being made by your Mass Transit Authority. These advances are... These advances, uh... <clears throat> these advances. <laughs> you know, I've been explaining about these advances for two decades now. I was chosen for this job because I was a race car driver. Racing cars are vehicles that uh, can go at incredible speeds and uh, compete with each other. They're private vehicles. Yes, private vehicles. So you see, I was chosen for this job, something like a reformed sinner, talking to a church congregation, spreading the gospel of moving you around from this place to that place to another place without 
Any problems? No pollution. No, no guilt. That's, that's the best part, no guilt. You see, in the old days, we were supposed to feel slightly guilty about cars. They, they created social problems. The oil companies are making too much money. There's too many highways. Always guilt, mountains of the stuff. So we changed all that. I mean, we went from oil to nuclear to solar to what we have now, which is, uh, which is mainly a lot of rules. I mean, there's thousands of them. They're growing like mushrooms. Is going to do for you? Ah, Jedney, me lad. You'll make a fine spokesman. The wheels of transit will be well oiled by your golden words. For God's sakes, this is serious. Jed, my friend, there ain't nothing serious anymore. are you doing? I'm hanging from the statue, Miss Ralston. I can see that. Why are you hanging from the statue? Because they tied me up here again. Ring, have you ever thought that you should try to be a little more like the others? That's one of the reasons your parents sent you here, you know. Yes, Miss Ralston. All right, now. Everyone smile. We'll be looking at this picture for years to come. Okay. Are you ready? On three, on three. Those are my chemistry notes. It took me two months to do them. You didn't have to do that. I thought this computer interference was under control. This is supposed to be a foolproof system. The tracer has it narrowed down to a six-block area bounded by a park and a boarding school. Ready to transmit. Clear all channels to receive transmission. talking about? Are you crazy? I'm not going to retire. It's not exactly a retirement. They want us to suspend you. What's the problem now, Judge? Which ass did you get kissed this month? Look, I'll fix it up as soon as I talk to these school kids. Look, you don't understand. It's different this time. It's not like all the other times. It's official. What do you mean, it's official? They, um, they want you where they can keep an eye on you. It means jail, Frank. Oh, 
away. Don't hit me. Who the hell are you? I'm important to you. I'm the only person who applauded your speech the other day. I take it you didn't bring the rest of the audience. It's the police. They're after me. Rick. What next? Yes. Sorry to bother you, sir. We're looking for a young man, a runaway. Sorry, boys, I can't help you. I fell asleep a while ago. I was uh, just uh, waiting for the rest of my family to come home. All right, thanks. Just call in if you see anything. I sure will. Thank you. Good night. What is it? It's a car. Doesn't look like the ones in the history books. What are you going to do with it? Nothing. You heard that illegal broadcast, too. You're going to California, aren't you? Why don't you just take care of your own problems? What was the, um, report from the two policemen who went to his house this evening? Nothing. Just that he'd fallen asleep and was waiting for his family to come home. He doesn't have a family. What's all that? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's an old aerial map, Boston. You know, most of these roads haven't been driven on in 25 years. And there's no way to get out of the city. All the roads have been blocked at the outskirts. I got a friend that'll help me. Who? Smokey the Bear. I'm not trying to be nosy. I'm just curious. No kidding. What's in the bag? These are my chemicals. Your chemicals? Yeah, I carry them around everywhere. I also brought some electronic equipment. Tell me exactly, why are the police after you? Well, I haven't heard anyone if that's what you're talking about. So answer the question. I tapped into government lines. What else? I rearranged a few things. Well, what the hell does that mean? I blew them up. Got any other talents I should know about? I have the police returning to the house now. You can hide in the attic and leave after the police have gone. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> 